A very good morning to all. Looking at important headlines from the Hindu newspaper for 26th November. On the front page you have Supreme Court to rule on Maharashtra float test today. So we had seen in Maharashtra the governor had at uh, early in the morning at around 5.40 a.m. evoked the uh, president's rule and drawn in Devendra Fadnavis from BJP as the chief minister of Maharashtra. So the Supreme Court asked the governor to put before it all the papers through which it had taken the decision to have the BJP leader sworn in and now the Supreme Court has said that it would pass an order on the question of holding a flow test in Maharashtra assembly. So the, the Sena and NCP Congress combined are saying that immediately uh, the, the, the the flow test should be conducted. What is a flow test? A floor test means a test in the legislative assembly, a voting in the legislative assembly to see if the party which is claiming to form the government has majority or not. So that is called the flow test. So if he has sworn in as the chief minister, then he should prove his majority in the house. The question is how much time they get for it. So Sena and NCP Congress combine are pressing for immediate vote. While Mr. Fadnavis is saying there is no need for immediate vote, he also said through his, uh, through his advocate that a floor test in the next 24 hours was out of question and he said that the court could not dictate terms to the governor while the judge said that a vote is a must. It is through that that we will come to know whether the party which has sworn in has majority or not. Also questions were raised on this cover of the night when at night you know, the, all this developments took place, president's rule was revoked and the governor sworn, uh, has sworn in Mr. Padnavis as the chief minister. Along with uh, Mr. Ajit Pawar from, from NCP as the deputy chief minister. Then this is JNK leaders refuse to sign release bonds. So this is regarding the development in Jammu and Kashmir. Jammu and Kashmir administration has opened channels of communication with 32 detained political prisoners of the regional parties. But uh, there were some riders, there were some conditions for their release. Two leaders from Jammu and Kashmir, PDP, and from uh, the other party to NC, National Conference, they refused to sign such bonds. So, conditions have been rejected. You can see. So, you can see, uh, it was also the uh, Shah Faisal, who is former topper of civil services examination, who has uh, formed his own party to he had quit his job uh, in 2019 to join politics he also has repeatedly refused to sign a bond for release then this is supreme court slams states on stubble burning so supreme court has lashed out on punjab and Haryana, govern Haryana governments for the inability to prevent pollution from stubble burning despite orders from the court it said that this stubble burning has made delhi a living hell so the court was angry and uh, was, uh, you know, as I had also stated earlier, we have seen that even a single case of stubble burning from now on, it had stated in one of its orders this year, that that would result in Supreme Court holding the officials as such at that level personally responsible and will have to pay compensation. But still stubble burning continues. And this is Islamic State member from Kerala surrenders in Afghanistan. So, a woman along with 20 others had left India in 2016 and allegedly joined Islamic State fighters and now they have surrendered in Afghanistan. Below you have total survival rights on handmade towels in Assam. So, activists are banking on Gamosa. So, Gamosa is this woven towel from Assam uh, which is white cotton towel and it has these uh, red borders as you can see and the motive of the Endangered turtle has been put on it as uh, you know a, a means to, to call for conservation of this rare freshwater turtle. So this is regarding the Gamosa as such too, which you should know, and also about uh, the turtle survival initiative being taken. So here you can see it's mentioning about the the Viswanath Ghat villagers at this Ghat are using the towel to call for survival of the turtle. So, Biswanath Ghat, it is located on northern banks of Brahmaputra river. 
ब्रह्मपुत्र फ्लोस थ्रू काजीरंगा नेशनल पार्क इन असम नेशनल पार्क इज हाय बायोडायवर्सिटी एंड इट हैज लेड टू 401 स्क्वायर किलोमीटर ऑफ विश्वनाथ वाइल्ड लाइफ डिवीजन बिकम अ पार्ट ऑफ काजीरंगा नेशनल पार्क On page three, you have Ravidas Temple. Supreme Court allows permanent structure. So Supreme Court has allowed a plea-seeking enclosure of pond within temple fence and a construction of a permanent structure for Guru Ravidas Temple in Tunglakabad Forest State. So instead of a wooden porta cabin, as such as suggested by the center, a permanent structure would be built, and Supreme Court has allowed for it. You should know about Ravidas Temple. So it was raised down as such. The demolition had led to oh, massive outcry and protests in Delhi and other parts of the country. And the case is before the Delhi Development Authority, which had demolished the Ravidas Temple, and it was said it was on the direction of the Supreme Court, which had observed that serious breach had been committed by Guru Ravidas Jayanti Samro Samiti by not vacating the forest area as ordered by the Supreme Court. But now the case is before the Supreme Court and it has allowed the its petition because it was said that the the Ravidas Temple would be set up in another place. So this is the case. On page eight you have Lake Band breach. Lok Ayukta steps in. So we had seen yesterday in news how in Karnataka, in Bengaluru, a lake had breached and had resulted in flooding in a large area, which has resulted in around thousand people to be evacuated. So this bund breach, it was said, was due to a contractor mistakenly, you know, tinkering with the bund. So this, on this now, the Lok Ayukta in Karnataka, Justice P. Vishwanath Shetty. Has said that he would take action against the officers and individuals involved in the breach. So you should also know about know about Lokayukta. So in cases of corruption, in cases of maladministration, the Lokayukta can take action. States have set up Lokayukta. Lokpal is at the center. Lokayukta in the states. So we have functional Lokayuktas in some states. So here is it is in Karnataka. So even the chief minister can be questioned. On page nine, you have. 3.7 percent food samples unsafe, 15.8 percent substandard. So this is a study by FSS AI, Food Safety and Standards Authority of India. So the data released by it on enforcement of norms has noted that 3.7 percent of the samples collected and analyzed were found unsafe, and 15.8 percent substandard. And nine samples had been had labeling defection. Labeling defects were also there. Just said Tamil Nadu was the worst performer in terms of unsafe food and labeling defects, while Nagaland had the most substandard products. So this is the data being given here. Then below you have Mamta regularizes 94 refugee colonies. So we have seen how central government has taken taken initiative on regularizing colonies in Delhi. So now in West Bengal, Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee has announced regularization of 94 refugee colonies on land owned by the state and central governments and on private premises. And this is onions from Egypt to hit the market soon. So center has said that we will be purchasing onions from Egypt. They will reach the Mumbai port. Presently onions at around 100 per kg. Central government wants it at around 52 to 60 per kg and wants states to provide additional subsidy. On editorial page, the first editorial is Hong Kong's protest vote. So this is regarding the elections in Hong Kong to the district councils there. So these elections allowed protesters to seek vote for democratic changes. And the record turnout is showing how people are supporting the protests which are going on for democracy in Hong Kong. And this is past and glorious. So this is regarding India's win in cricket against uh, in the test cricket against Bangladesh. So you can skip that. The lead article India's enduring document of governance. So today is 26 November, which is the day on which constitution was signed. So you can see. So you know, the constitution's durability is spoken of here. It says it arises from the basic commitment and experience its makers show even in the 
1940s. So, the, our constitution is durable is what this article is uh, arguing, saying that uh, the commitment and experience with the makers of the constitution showed in 1940s uh, show, uh, gives, gives Indian constitution the durability and how it is an enduring document of governance. And below you have helping 10 year olds to read by 2030. So it is said India has been successful in increasing access to school, but now the focus must shift on quality. So that is important. Quality primary education. Then on op-ed page here you have regarding uh, maltreatment, you know, uh, humiliation. So it says it talks of what is wrong with deep humiliation. So somebody being humiliated like maltreating Dalits. You know, so structural humiliation like African Americans have been suffering earlier as well. So that is spoken of and also about uh, in women Kashmir too, humiliation. So disempowers people and ensures that humiliating act is stamped forever on their minds to render the resulting debasement vibrant to them with the sole purpose of satisfying the humiliator. So this malicious act. So, dismembering of the state of Jammu and Kashmir is also seen by many Kashmiris as humiliating. And you can see in protest they are not, uh, they are shutting shops as such. So, even in protest and even in fear of uh, uh, insurgents. You know. Then this is manipulating information to perpetuate power. So, this article talks or uh, questions, is India becoming an informational autocracy? So, Indian government statistical machinery is in a state of disarray and government rejects adverse uh, data. So, that we have seen earlier too on consumer spending data, it rejected the data. And it recently also, we have seen how the data have been delayed, National Crime Records Bureau data has been delayed. That also when it came forth and uh, other data was regarding Swaj Bharat also, National Statistical Commission uh, Organization's data, it showed the uh, difference from what the government had claimed yesterday on the front page we also saw how double burning data differs so this credibility data credibility issue and manipulation of information to perpetuate power is we are is what we are seeing so this article questions is india becoming an informational autocracy on page 12 you have center introduces bill to amend spg act in lok sabha so this is regarding Special Protection Bill. So, this amendment bill of 2019 has been introduced in Lok Sabha and the reason for the bill it said is that it is considered to amend the act to focus on core mandate because security of the Prime Minister as the head of the government is of paramount importance. So, the, the bill says that SPG shall provide proximate security to the Prime Minister and his immediate family residing with him at his official residence. So, it says that family members of former Prime Minister who do not reside with him at his official residence will not be guarded by SPG commando and those who reside with him will get security cover of the SPG only for 5 years. So, we have seen how recently SPG cover had been withdrawn from Sunia Gandhi, from Priyanka Gandhi, Rahul Gandhi and even earlier from Prime Minister, former Prime Minister Manmohan Singh. And this is Marshall's back in Bangalas after the military style attire resulted in controversy. The earlier uh, uniform is back for the Marshall's in, uh, you can see in Rajasabha. On page 13 you have, Ajit Pawar gets clean shit in 9 cases. Anti-corruption video terms it as routine. It says its timing has nothing to do with political developments. So, in Maharashtra, we have seen BJP has got Ajit Pawar joining him and you know, Devendra Fadnav is being sworn in as uh, Chief Minister of Maharashtra and now the what was expected and what was said that how Ajit Pawar would benefit that the cases against him would be withdrawn. So, now here you can see Ajit Pawar has been given clean shit in 9 cases by anti-corruption bureau which says that this timing has nothing to do with political development. On international page you have democracy backers sweep Hong Kong polls. So here in Hong Kong now we saw elections took place to district councils and democracy, those who were supporting democracy 
those candidates have captured 389 of 452 seats while governments allies just 156 seats down from 300 in 2015 so this is a win for the protesters and pro democracy activists and here you have assange could die in uk jail for want of care wants doctors so julian assange wikileaks founder has been in uk jail and the uh, doctors want him to be shifted to a properly equipped hospital. So we have seen his entire timeline earlier in this month itself. Then you have UN, US missions against Islamic State in Northern Syria resumed. So US troops have resumed large scale counterterrorism missions against Islamic State groups in Northern Syria. So two months after President Trump abruptly ordered to withdraw U.S. troops, which opened the way for a bloody Turkish cross-border offensive, now U.S.-backed operations are back fighting against Islamic State fighters in the area. Also, it has joined forces with Syrian Kurdish fighters. So, Syrian Kurds were the ones against whom Turkish had led an offensive, and Syrian Kurds are an ally of U.S. in Syria. So, now U.S. has again joined forces with Syrian Kurds. We saw that because of this development, Russia came into the picture. Syrian government of Bashar al-Assad got a hand here, but now US is back. And this is leaked papers show how China runs its camps. So these leaked government documents as such have shown how China's network of internment camps in Xinjiang province are functioning. China calls it vocational education centers, but then the leaked documents show how officials monitor inmates at all times. And they are, no, they are not vocational educational centers, but rather camps. The, as such. On business page, you have central GST collection at 3.26 lakh crores in financial year 2019-20. So, this is regarding GST collection so far this fiscal. It's at 3.26 lakh crores or about half of what the government target is for 2019-20. Then this is also regarding spectrum auction which is again again stated that government wants to hold spectrum auction for 5G. So that is it. These are the important headlines. The last page has sports related news. For detailed coverage of current affairs you can visit our website asha.com. Thank you.